Okay, the next part is RFE, recursive feature elimin elimination, and we have already seen that once. So uh, the, uh, the process of the RFE is we have a machine learning model, and then originally we send all the features, the full data set into the, the RFE model, and then RFE will try to try to eliminate each of the feature. And then depending on the uh, on the performance it will decide which feature can be eliminated in the first round so we end up with n minus one feature and then we do the second round of the uh, uh, rfe so in the second round we are going to try to drop one more feature and actually we are going to try to drop uh, try to drop all the features each once and then depending on the performance of the result, we are gonna drop the least important second feature. Okay, so this is the process of the RFE. And then we also have to create a model again, so we can use the same data set and we use the same logistic regression model. And then we do the RFE and then we send the, uh, the logistic regression model and then we specify that we only want to keep four features. And after that, uh, we train that again and then we can say, uh, we can print uh, the, uh, well, eventually we are going to only keep four features and then those are the support and the ranking. So for the support, it will, uh, it will give you a bunch of the truths and the falses. And remember, there are only uh, four features we are keeping. So those are the, there will be four truths. And then for the, fe uh, for the ranking, so for the ranking, well, the four ones are the ones we are going to keep. And then uh, number five will be the first feature got dropped and then number four is the second feature dropped and then number three, number two, and eventually we are going to leave four ones and those four ones will be the features we are keeping. Okay, so uh, to make it easier to see and we are zipping uh, the, uh, the feature names and then the rankings and then we see, okay, the four features important, uh, more important features are uh, the mass, uh, paddy, plus, and preg. Okay, so the next thing, let's put those two feature selections together. So for the RFE, those are the four features we got. And then for the uh, select K best, those are the features we got. So, well, the problem is they are not quite the same, right? So let's just use the, uh, the four features RFE recommended for us. And then uh, we do, uh, we do a transform so we can use the fit RFE and then do a transform of the data and then we only have four columns here and we use those four columns to do a train test split and we use the logistic regression and then let's check uh, the confusion matrix. So if I remember correctly, uh, this confusion matrix is slightly better than this one. So Okay, the point is, well, why do we have different top four features from RFE and the select K best? So think about that. So RFE, it recommends us different four features compared with the select K best. So why they're different? And if you have to make the decision, which one are we gonna trust? Okay, here's my answer. So for the select KBS, well, we consider that as a static feature evaluation. So when we do the select best, we didn't say which machine learning model are we going to use, right? And then, well, it doesn't run any machine learning algorithm to select the KBS features. Okay, and how about RFE? For the RFE, we have to give it a machine learning model. And for example, if we have decided that we want to use logistic regression and then what? And we just go ahead and then make a machine learning model and send it to RFE. So RFE is evaluating the features or evaluating the feature importance using a specific machine learning model. So if you have already uh, decided that logistic regression is the right machine learning machine learning model you're going to use so go ahead and then send uh, send the, uh, the 
uh, logistic regression model to the RFE and then have the RFE help you evaluate the features. In the other, on the other side, if you haven't decided which machine learning model are you going to use, however, you want to have some sense on what are the good features and then go ahead and use the select K best. Okay, so the next part, we have a fun test. So what we are trying to do is we want to introduce a noise data set. We are still using the, uh, the diabetes data and then those are the feature names, those are the feature names and we are adding one more feature and that is just nothing but random values between zero and 100. Okay, so we add a noise called, uh, called, uh, called noise column and then we just give that a bunch of random values. And after that, let's try to do a feature evaluation. So why do I do that? Well, since this is a noise feature and they, they, well, this feature doesn't help us to make any of the predictions. So, well, uh, in our feature evaluation, it is supposed to be a bad feature. Right, so let's try that and see if our feature feature uh, selection really shows that uh, that is a bad feature. Well, depending on how lucky you are, and well, usually uh, in my uh, I tried that several times, and usually the noise is not is the feature we are going to throw away. But if you are lucky enough and you have the noise as one of the ones, and then we have a funny condition. We introduce a, a noise feature, and then actually it is, it is evaluated as an important feature. So go ahead and write this code by yourself, and uh, I suggest you pause this video a little bit because I'm about to show the the answers. Okay, so go ahead, pause the video, and then do the coding by yourself first. Okay, so this is my answer. Well, uh, I know I want to uh, generate the random uh, random values between zero and one hundred, and then I know there are a total of seven sixty eight records. So I'm gonna just create a column with random values from zero to one hundred, and then uh, the length of this column will be seven sixty eight. Okay, and then after that, I just add that column into the dataset. So now I have this dataset updated, and well, uh, for the parameter names, and remember, I'm adding one more feature name, so that is noise. Right, and then I want to uh, do a train test. Uh, well, I want to separate the features and the column uh, columns. The column we are going to uh, we are going to predict, and after that, well, we do the select K best, and then well, in the select K best, well, where is my noise? So my noise is here. So that is indeed a very small value, and it is even a little bit higher than paddy and very close to press okay so even this is just a random value feature it's surprisingly not the worst feature in this case and then i also tried the rfe and in rfe my noise is on number four so uh, it is bad but yet well it is better than skin or test Okay, so this is my observation. Even though I introduce a a random a, a feature uh, with nothing but random value, and sometimes it is not the worst feature. And I have seen uh, people doing some uh, weird tests, like like well, when they add a add a little bit noise to an existing feature or they just add a new feature with pure noise and then it can drastically change the performance of a machine learning model and that is possible and that is another point that we should do uh, feature engineering because well if there are noise features then they won't help us do any prediction but they will uh, further damage the performance so we should do the feature engineering and get rid of them if we can okay so that's it for this video and we i have probably one or two videos next okay